In this demo, I'll be showing how you can uh, deploy multiple pods and multiple containers using the Auto DevOps Deploy uh, project. You'll also get to see the new uh, pod logs page with Mingyal's uh, environment selector. So if you deploy this project, you get a single pod with a single container. You can see the single pod here. We don't have a container selector, so you can't verify that uh, it has a single container, but you can verify using kubectl. So if you want multiple pods to be deployed, you need to run the pipeline with a replicas variable. And you can set it to how many other pods you want. I had paused the recording while the deployment job was doing its work. Now that it has completed, we should be able to see three pods. So here you can see that it has deployed three pods as well as here. You can also verify using kubectl. So here you can see three pods. So now let's look at the environments page. And here you can see three pods as well. You can switch between the pods using the uh, environment, the pod selector. Uh, right now I don't have any deployments on the other environments, but the environment selector is functional. So that's how you deploy uh, multiple pods. If you want to deploy multiple uh, containers, you need to modify the Helm chart that the auto deploy job uses. So that's in this repository. So we need to download all these files and upload them into the auto DevOps deploy project. So let's use the web ID for that. So the files have to be uploaded into a folder called chart. Let's create that. Upload the files that uh, we downloaded from the auto deploy repository. We also need the templates folder. So let's create another templates inside chart and upload the files inside the templates folder. So now that we've uploaded it, let's commit. So when you commit, uh, a new pipeline gets created automatically. So we'll also modify the YAML files before committing. So in order to have uh, two, two or more containers, we need to modify the deployment YAML file under templates. There is a containers key under spec. Containers. So here you can see there's only one container currently. So let's copy that and create a second container. We just need to make sure that the name is different. Okay, so let's come with this.
it should automatically create a new pipeline I'll pause again here until the job completes now that the job is completed we should be able to see a single pod with two containers so here you can see the a single pod with two containers it says zero because the containers are still starting up these three are the previous three pods that are now terminating because each new deployment replaces the previous one you can also see it in kubectl so previously we had three pods each with a single container so we should now have a single pod with two containers so let's go to the environments page and you can see that uh, it displays the logs of one of the containers so since we don't have a container selector you can't uh, select the second container the API currently supports it so all we need is a new API which lists out the containers in a pod Hi. I would like to show a small demo of a generic alert endpoint. Users can use an endpoint when sending alert notification but will create a GitLab issue with the alerts payload. The feature is available for the GitLab Enterprise Edition only. I've already created an empty GitLab project to use in this demo. To use the feature, we need to enable an alerts endpoint service. To do that, we need to navigate to Settings and Integrations. On this page, we scroll down to the Project Services and look for Alerts Endpoint. On this page, we can activate the service. When we use the feature for the first time, we need to reset authorization key. Now the service is activated and ready to use. Let's take a quick look into documentation of that feature. On the bottom of the page, we can see an example of the alerts payload. The body of a request should be a JSON object and can contain any important details about the alert. There are some parameters we will try to extract from the payload, although they are all optional. Those parameters are title, description, start time, service, monitoring tool, and hosts. Now, when we know the URL, of token, and the payload structure, let's try to send a request. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to use Postman to send request. Customers can use any external monitoring tool to do that. We select a POST as a request type. The request URL is the URL we can get from the alert service page. Then we choose Beer token and provide the token we already have. Since the payload is a JSON, we need to set up a content type header to have an application JSON value. The last piece is the request body. Let's set it to row and provide the following JSON. Now our request is ready. We can try to send it now.
we have a successful response. Now let's move to the issues page and check the alert we just created. Here is our issue. Inside we can see alerts title is set to the title we passed. There are also expected parameters in the summary section and there is a list of extra parameters in the alert details section. If you look back to the payload we use, we will see what additional parameters is a nested JSON object. Here on the page you can see this object has been inlined. Since all the parameters are optional, let's try to send an empty JSON as a payload. We update the body of request to be an empty JSON and send it. Now let's check the issues page again. Here you can see there is a new alert but with a default title. In addition to the title, we are setting a start time. This alert doesn't carry a lot of useful information about the incident, although it's possible to send an empty payload. This concludes the demo of Do a quick demo of setting up Grafana for embedding metrics. Um, just a quick prereq to being able to do that is you have to have Grafana set up with Prometheus um, and like actually monitoring content. Um, for me, the easiest way to set all of that up was to just run um, an Omnibus install in Docker. So I actually have two um, instances of GitLab running on my machine right now. One, the Omnibus install, the other GDK. And Omnibus can come configured with um, Grafana to monitor the GitLab instance. So that's the thing that I'm actually going to be pulling metrics from. Um, yeah. You can see I've got it running in Docker right now. So not all of this is merged yet, um, but if we go into a project in um, our GitLab instance, for me this is the GDK one just because it's my local dev environment, um, we can go to settings, operations, and it will take us into um, where we can configure our Grafana authentication. This is the URL of my Grafana instance because it's just running on localhost. And if we go over here, we can actually generate a new token for this. I think that's fun and worth doing. Um, in Grafana, we can just uh, go over to our gear and then into API keys. You need to be in an admin account for this. Um, so add demo. Oh shoot, I think that was a viewer one. It was, we need to add a different one because this key needs to be um, an admin key. Great. So this is the API key I just generated. I'm going to come back over here, drop it in, and just hit save changes. Okay, so this is now ready to go. Um, we should be able to go generate a URL to metrics in Grafana and place it in an issue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new issue for this while that page is loading. Um, yeah, this. <laughs> uh, I've had, this Grafana instance running for just a little bit. 
So I'm gonna zoom in on a time window just to have it look prettier here. So there's a couple of things we need to do to generate our link to a panel. Um, the first is any variables need to have a value. Um, so I've now selected my instance and here I can just open the sharing panel and I need to have a time range and template variables um, toggled to on. I can copy my link. Now I come back over here. This should work. And I just watch some network requests happen. <laughs> okay, so we're calling out to Prometheus, these query range requests. Oh, and there's our data. Um, yeah, we should be able to embed as many of these as we want. Um, I guess that's the whole run through. Not all of this has been merged yet, um, but it will be coming to a GitLab instance near you very soon. Cool. Thanks.